Hello and welcome to Michigan State University Extension's 4-H Financial Minute video series. This video covers the annual financial summary report, the annual report of income, expenses, inventory, and sales tax for 4-H groups. As a reminder, Michigan 4-H Youth Development is part of Michigan State University Extension, which is part of Michigan State University. Because of this, all funds raised in the name of 4-H are public monies, and it's important that 4-H members and volunteers effectively manage funds raised as part of the activities of a 4-H group. A 4-H group is defined as any entity that uses the 4-H name and emblem, including clubs, councils, boards, and committees. So why is the annual financial summary report required for all 4-H groups? It completes a federal requirement for financial accounting and fulfills the audit concerns of MSU creates an open, audible public record, provides a paper trail, and is a wise fiscal practice. It helps protect the 4-H group's treasurer and leaders, and 4-H staff need this information to complete the annual IRS tax paperwork on behalf of 4-H groups. The annual financial summary report lists the group's financial activities for the program year. The 4-H year is from September 1 to August 31st, and the annual financial summary report outlines the income, expenses, sales tax, and inventory for a specific 4-H year. Any group other than a spin club that uses the 4-H name and emblem must complete and file a copy of this report whether or not they handle money. This means groups without a treasury, whether or not their participation fees pass through the group, must complete this form with a zero balance and submit it by the designated date. Check with your county staff for when the Annual Financial Summary Report, or AFSR, is due for your county. There is a sample report in the Volunteer Manual on page 31 to 32. There are detailed directions for each line of the AFSR on pages 28 through 30 in the Financial Manual for Volunteers. Over the next few slides, I will cover each step in depth. Complete Part 1 with the year covered by the report, the county, the 4-H group's name, and its employee identification number. Fill in the remainder of Part 1 if the group had an account at a financial institution during the reporting period. Part 1 is completed by everyone, no matter if the club had funds or not. You might be wondering if you even have to complete the rest of the annual financial summary report if your group does not collect or spend money. If, for the particular reporting year, the group 1 had no treasury, 2 had no income or expenses, 3 did not handle participation fees, 4 held no fundraisers, and collected no donations, then Part 2, you would enter zeros in each space A through F. Once done, move on to Part 4. For those 4-H groups with income, expenses, money from a fundraiser, donation, or involved the collection of the participation fee, Part 2 covers the income and expenses for the group. Let's start with the income for the 4-H group. Enter the balance the group has in the financial institution or in a safe place at home if the group had less than $100 and does not have an account. For groups with an account, the beginning adjusted treasury balance is the beginning balance on the September statement of last year, plus any checks and minus any deposits that were made prior to September 1 that had not cleared. Enter this in number A. On lines 1 and 2, list the income the group earned in the period by selling tangible personal property, such as craft items, tack, cookbooks, calendars, flat books, bulletins, and food prepared on site such as a concession stand. This includes food sold for donated income. List the event or activity, the date, and the total amount raised. In addition to tangible personal property, when the 4-H group auctions in both live and silent auction items, other than animals or prepared food, for example, gift baskets, flowers, a fishing trip, etc., the income the group earns is taxable. The amount earned for those sales must be included in this section of the report. If more lines are needed to record the group's taxable sales, list them on an additional sheet. Enter the total from the additional sheet on line 3. Add all these together and enter the total in B. For non-taxable income on line 1, list the total 4-H participation fees the leader or group collected. On line 2, report total monetary donations received when the group received money with no exchange of services or items. On lines 3 and 4, list income from non-taxable sources such as group dues, services such as a car wash and babysitting, the sale of food not prepared on site, such as a bake sale, candy sales, cookie dough, or pizza kit sales. 
If more lines are needed to record the group's non-taxable income, list them on an additional sheet. Enter the total from the additional sheet on line 5. Add these non-taxable together, lines 1 to 5, and enter them out in C. Add together B and C to figure out the total income for the past year. Record the number in D. We are now going to look at completing the expense portion of the form in Part 2. For line 1, list the amount of 4-H participation fees paid to the MSU Extension Office. This should match the line from participation fee income. Use lines 2 to 5 to summarize expenses. For each event or activity, list the event, the date, the total amount spent. For example, a pizza party might include pop, pizza, plates, cups, napkins, and cookies. If sales tax was recorded on last year's annual financial summary report, part 3 on the form, list as an expense from the previous year on this year's AFSR. If more lines are needed to record the group expenses, list them on an additional sheet. Enter the total from the additional sheet on line 6. Add lines 1 to 7 to get your total expenses and enter that number in E. Now add together the treasury balance at the beginning of the period A and total income for the period D. From that total, subtract total expenses from the period E. Enter this amount in the box to the right of the number sign after F. Next, ask yourself, does the amount in F, account balance at the end of the period, agree with the statement balance on September 1st of the current year? If yes, enter 0 next to G and H. Enter the account balance next to I. If answer is no, total the checks written that have not shown on the current year's September statement. Enter this total next to G. Total the deposits made that have not shown on the current year's September statement. Enter this total next to H. Add together F and G, subtract H from the total of F and G. Enter this amount next to the number sign after I. This action essentially the same as reconciling a checkbook. It figures the adjusted balance. Note, if I still does not agree with the beginning statement balance of September 1 of the current year, go back and check that all the period's income expenses were included. If the figures still do not agree, review the period's financial transaction with a new per person who has not been involved with the Treasury. The county 4-H staff person may be able to provide guidance. Next, answer these three quick questions in the Please Respond section. These questions help 4-H program coordinators know more about the local 4-H group and the June 30th account balance is needed by MSU as part of the reporting they're required to do for the IRS. Part 3 is completed if the 4-H group had fundraisers where sales tax was required to be collected. You will use the number from Part 2, Line B, and then divide that number by 17.67. This determines the amount of sales tax due. Write out the check for that amount to Michigan State University and submit the check to the County Extension Office when turning in the annual financial summary for the year. Please remember this amount you will need to include on next year's annual financial summary report as an expense. Part 4 is only completed by groups that did not have an account at a financial institution and have less than $100. The group just needs to sign this box. Part 5 is a section where the 4-H group will list any items that are owned by the 4-H group. The 4-H group property includes items purchased with 4-H money and those items donated to the 4-H group. If your group has no property, you need to sign and verify at the top of Section 5. Otherwise, take the time to list all the inventory the club has. Use additional pieces of paper if needed. A good tip is to look at your inventory list from the previous year and make sure everything is included again unless it was marked as discarded or used in the previous year. Once an item has been marked as discarded or used, it doesn't need to stay on the list. The last step, part 6, is for the person who completed the report to sign and date the annual financial summary report. After that, you need to have another person in the group who isn't on the account or related to the preparer review and approve the report. This person will also sign and date the report. Finally, the report, along with a copy of the treasurer's report, copy of the secretary's minutes, and payment of sales tax, if necessary, needs to be turned into your local 4-H program coordinator by your county deadline. Please know that counties have specific deadlines set so they can get all the necessary paperwork turned into MSU, so 990s can be filed for each group into the IRS by their deadlines. A fillable version of the annual financial summary report can be found on MSU Extension's 4-H financial management website. 
Congratulations, you completed the annual financial summary report. For questions or support, your best resources are the financial manuals for 4-H volunteers and 4-H treasurers and your 4-H program coordinator. Thank you for watching. This video was brought to you by Michigan State University Extension.